Hey y'all. So I just realized I didn't film an outro <laughs> for yesterday's video. Like I didn't film a segment of me saying bye. So yeah, bye from yesterday's vlog. But now we're on today's vlog. <laughs> so yeah, I haven't filmed anything at all today. It is almost 4 p.m. <sighs> the girls are spending the night with their grandparents and I've really just spent my day cleaning. As you can tell, my kitchen is still messy, but it's not it's not near the mess that it usually is. <laughs> um, man, it's amazing the things that I can get done when the girls aren't at home. And I got quite a few boxes packed and I got Piper's room cleaned and organized. So her room is good to go. And I also spent my morning curing one of my um, cast iron skillets. I told you guys I was working on all of that. So this cast iron skillet is from like I don't know it's from the year like 1920 or something like that anyway it was all rusted out and I've been baking it on and off for the last three days I've put canola oil olive oil and vegetable oil kind of all mixed in it and you can still kind of see you're not supposed to be able to see the actual um, iron part of it um, but it's starting to get there it's turning black so that's good um, but I still have a few days worth of work to do on that, I do believe. Um, <clears throat> and I also spent the morning on the phone. Hi, buddy. I also spent the morning on the phone with, um, oh, hi, sweet boy. He's trying to, he wanted to hug, I guess. Oh, you're going to knock me over. You're going to knock me over. Um, I spent the morning on the phone with, um, a local company who fits kids, special needs kids, for wheelchairs. So someone is coming to our house on Wednesday, um, next Wednesday, and they are going to fit in our keys for a wheelchair. Thank goodness. So I know it's going to take time for it to actually get in, but I'm just excited that something is happening with it, that the ball is, is rolling now on getting him a chair that he needs. Um, got Aiden. He's just kind of plopped in my lap. He got off the bus about an hour ago. I got a call from his school today telling me to come pick him up, that he wasn't feeling good, that he was throwing up and had diarrhea and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, well, I couldn't get him because my husband has the truck today, um, so I have to keep him home tomorrow um, per the reg school regulations, I guess, if he gets sick or something. He has to be home for 24 hours after the event. Um, but he seems fine to me. I don't know. I don't know what the deal was. Um, he doesn't have a fever. I haven't noticed any yucky diapers. He just ate like a huge bowl of food. He drank his drink. And I haven't noticed any vomiting. Um, he is, I don't know if you guys can tell. Now watch him not do it now that I'm filming him. Um, he does, hey buddy, he does this thing. It's, um, he regurgitates his food and he will hold it in his mouth. And he is doing that a lot. See, there he goes. See how he's doing like that and how his cheeks puff out? He is um, regurgitating his food, which is something he still will do on and off. Um, he kind of stopped for a while and I don't know, sometimes he still reverts back into that old behavior. Um, and I think that maybe what it is, what they thought was him throwing up was him just regurgitating the food and then maybe he just spit it out or something. Um, he did this in the orphanage because he was he was literally starving to death in the orphanage. They just didn't look at little toes, little toes. Um, they just didn't feed him nearly enough. Um, so it was just a coping mechanism that he learned over, <laughs> I love the toes, um, that he learned over many, many years of just not being fed enough. Um, so the regurgitating the food um, was just a way of him feeling like he could taste the food again or he could throw it up and then swallow it again and I know that sounds disgusting but I mean that that was a coping mechanism for him for so many years so it's gonna take a long time for him to completely break that but he doesn't do it with every meal like he used to he used to just I mean constantly was doing that and I think he does it now when he gets overwhelmed or feels anxious or something like that but he gets to stay home with me tomorrow which is fine I love having him home I love having him home. Yes, I do. Yes, he's so sweet. He's so little toes. <laughs> I get the question a lot. Um, it just it's just a general question. Is Aiden a difficult child? Um, like, is he hard to take care of? What do I have to do on a daily basis to take care of him? He's not hard, you guys. I mean, 
blind, blind, autistic, and nonverbal, the diagnosis sounds intimidating, you know? It sounds like, man, that would be really, really difficult. And then when you hear that he's cognitively around 12 to 14 months, um, people get even more, uh, like, I don't know, upset, but they get a little bit more nervous about being around him or they just, I don't know, they just envision this very difficult child. Um, and he's not, you guys, he's the easiest kid. Both of my boys are easy. Um, I mean, ridiculously easy. I mean, it's not easy going to and from the medical appointments, and physically it's very demanding on me, um, especially with Narkees, because I have to pick him up and take, take him to the bathroom and dress him and bathe him, and, like, everything is on me, like, lifting and moving in terms of him. Um, but behavior-wise, which I think is what most people think of when you adopt children from hard places or children from in mental institutions who have been so neglected and abused their whole life, and these are older children. We adopted them when Aiden was six and Narkees was 10, and they're seven and 11 now. Um, but I don't know, you just think that, well, they've been in the institution for so long, you know, they their habits are ingrained, they are who they're gonna be, there's no changing them, they're not gonna learn how to love you, they'll have attachment disorder. And while that is very possible, a lot of children adopted from mental institutions, or even not mental institutions, children of average intelligence and, you know, typically developing kids, a lot of kids of that nature can have um, attachment disorder. Um, you just, you don't ever know, you don't know. But, God has been amazing and he blessed us and our kids are easy. They're so easy. This, what he's doing right there, he loves to open and close drawers. That's probably like the most difficult thing that he does um, because you do have to watch him and make sure that he's not um, going to hurt himself or pinch his fingers or um, something like that. And he will grab things and kind of throw them. Um, so, but other than typical baby proofing, because come on, a baby will do that. Um, other than typical baby proofing, you know, that's, that's really the hardest thing with Aiden. Um, that and of course, you know, getting him the therapy that we think he needs. But yeah, to answer the question, in short, <laughs> Reader's Digest version, no, my kids are not difficult. I don't think they're difficult. I don't think that someone off the street could come into my house and be with my four kids all day and think it's a piece of cake, but this is my life. You know, this is, this is the life that I chose. Um, and it didn't happen so gradually. You know, I had one kid and then I had two kids and then I adopted and it's not like I was thrown into suddenly having four kids, you know? I don't know, it's, no, it's not difficult. Um, challenging, hectic, chaotic, yes. Difficult, no, no. We've got it, we got it under control. Um, we wouldn't change it for the world and we would do it all over again. In fact, we will do it again someday. We're definitely going to adopt again someday. Um, whenever God calls us. Look, he, <laughs> uh, he moved on. He moved over to that drawer now. You're cute, buddy. He's adorable. I love you. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and end today's vlog. I know I didn't film very much. Um, I just have a lot to do today and I've got to run to the grocery store and my husband gets home and I need to get the boys taken care of and I don't know. I just don't have, there's not really a lot to film today, but uh, <clears throat> what'd you find, buddy? Yeah. He found the, uh, the paper towel rod that doesn't have a paper towel holder on it. He's like hitting it. Um, anyway, not a lot going on today. I'm just staying here and hanging out with my kiddos and yeah, that's pretty much all we're doing. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I know a lot of you guys have been asking um, when I'm going to do a, a video about Aiden, telling Aiden's story. Um, I did a video about Narkees telling his story and you know his journey to where he was in Ukraine and how we came to find him and all of that kind of stuff. And that's called um, an adoption, no, special needs adoption, Narkees' story. That's the title. Um, and it's on um, it's on my channel, so you can just search for that and find it if you haven't seen it. Where are you going? He's like trying to get through the box maze. But um, oh, you want to go see the guinea pigs? Come over here. Come back this way. But anyways, <laughs> I am going to do a video telling a little bit about Aiden's um, Aiden's story um, because he has a good story too. He has a very a very touching and at the same time heartbreaking story just like Narkees did um, and I will definitely be 
doing a video on that. I think I'm going to wait a little bit closer to Christmas to do Aiden's um, because I also want to kind of coordinate it with a little like fundraiser for some other orphans um, that are on Reese's Rainbow. So anyway, that's what's going on. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye guys.